Welcome back. So let's talk a little bit about the nervous system. We're talking about the nervous system. We have the central nervous system and we have the peripheral nervous system. The central nervous system compri is comprised of the brain and the spinal cord. Not all these peripheral nerves, just the brain and the spinal cord. Central nervous system, two things, brain and spinal cord, okay? Peripheral nervous system is how all these nerves connect and take things throughout the whole body. It's so interesting. This is just one of the great frontiers that we've not even scratched the surface on. So looking at this, as your spinal cord goes down, each area is responsible for a different part of the body as you see. So the first little bit will cover this area, then here, then here, and so forth. If you've ever seen someone who has been paralyzed in part because of an injury, accident, something like that, depending on where the trauma happened will depend on where their paralysis starts. So you can see how it is in different areas. The thoracic is all this area. And then here's the lumbar. So it would depend on where the injury happened in here as to where their paralysis would, would start and what areas they would still have control of. So remember, it's not exactly about the vertebrae, it's about the actual the actual spinal cord that gets damaged in here that will cause this. Now, when we're talking about the brain, as you know, it is very vascular, lots of blood vessels. And when we're talking about a stroke, a cerebral vascular accident, we're talking about either having um, a blockage that could be from a blood clot or um, maybe an embolus like a piece of fat or plaque. Um, or it could be a hemorrhage where there was an aneurysm and it blew and the bleeding's going out into the brain. Maybe a trauma that caused um, some bleeding in the brain. But depending on where that happened, where the incident took place, will depend upon what we see in the, in the form of um, your signs and symptoms. You know, if it happens um, in the speech area of the brain or if it happens in the balance, um, different parts of the brain are responsible for different things. So, when we're talking about dementia, one of the places it starts is the hippocampus inside here. And um, one of the first things a lot of people don't know is they lose their sense of smell. And then it's the short term. And then it starts from the front and it goes backwards. So as our brain develops, it develops in the back with just your basic, um, just your basic things like swallowing, breathing, heartbeat, way back in the base of your brain, and then it develops as it goes forward. And the prefrontal cortex in here is the last thing that usually becomes fully developed, and they say in young men, it, they're in their 20s before this is fully, fully developed. And that's why some risky behaviors and such, um, because this is your higher thought and judgment, thinking things through, taking risks, that's all up here. When we have dementia, it starts here and goes backwards. So the damage is going to, of course, first start in here, 
the amygdala and the um, hippocampus area, then you're going to see them start making uh, some decisions that you're not so sure about and then it's working back. They're going to lose some speech. They're going to lose some balance. They're going to lose more and more to the, it's finally back to that um, right in the very back where the basic parts of life, the breathing, the are finally affected. Okay, let's talk a little bit now about sympathetic and parasympathetic. We're talking about the autonomic nervous system. Autonomic, automatic. These are things that you don't have to think through to do. If I move my hand, I think and I can make it happen, right? Well, these are things that just happen. They've been with us as humans for ages and ages and ages and ages, millennial, okay? And these are things that your body does without you even having to think about it. It is part of what kept us alive all these years, but sometimes it can work against us, especially in this day and age. So let's talk about that. First, the sympathetic nervous system. Now clearly I cannot draw, but when we're talking about the sympathetic nervous system, it's that fight or flight. And if I could draw, I draw a picture of a little um, caveman carrying his club, running from a saber-toothed tiger who's just about ready to get him. Okay. Nowadays, our fight and flight might come from somebody pulling out right in front of you, and you're slamming on your brakes, and your car's kind of. Uh, Ever had that happen? I sure have. How do you feel when that happens? Relaxed and happy to be alive? I doubt it. No, Push, right? Pupils dilate, your heart rate goes way up. Vasoconstriction, all the blood's going to your major organs. Digestion stops because your body feels like we have other things we've got to take care of here. We've to the muscles and to the lungs. Open the lungs up real wide. We either have to fight or run. You get a dry mouth. You're on point, right? Stress. Our everyday life and stress, this can happen. Also, some of the meds we take will make this happen. Did you know a bronchodilator is a very sympathetic nervous system stimulating drug? Think about it. When you take an inhaler, a bronchodilator, it makes your heart, right? We know that. It makes the heart palpitate. It makes makes you have tachycardia, rapid heart rate. We know that it makes you feel jittery. We know it dilates the pupils. We know all these things. People who take the bronchodilators also get a very dry mouth. This is, this is well known. The reason why a bronchodilator um, works is it opens up those lungs. And it does that so fight or flight, because you need that oxygen so you can run from that saber-toothed tiger. Don't need it when somebody pulls out in front of you but it's that same ingrained thing that triggers it and the adrenaline is squirted out, right? The original bronchodilators were very close to straight out epinephrine, which is adrenaline. Um, now we have some that aren't quite, doesn't, don't have quite so many side effects, still the same, okay? And there are other drugs in this category as well. And then we also have the parasympathetic. So sympathetic, opposite, parasympathetic. Parasympathetic I tried, but I didn't exactly draw it well. I think of a Corona commercial, you know, laying in a hammock between two palm trees on a beautiful beach, drinking a Corona with a lime in it. And it's rest and digest. You get vasodilation, those blood vessels open up. Therefore, you have to watch for orthostatic hypotension. That means you stand up and whew, 
get dizzy. Digestion goes right on. Increase in urination, decrease in heart rate. Some of our medications we take actually um, are parasympathetic. A beta blocker is an example of this. Okay? So, have you ever been at work and you walk in and everybody says, oh my gosh, I'm glad you're here. You're the only CNA. Oh my gosh. So you dig in and you work and you work and you work and you don't take a break. And pretty soon here comes Gloria from second shift and you're saying, what are you doing here? And she says, well, it is a quarter to two. Where did the time go? It just passed so fast. You haven't eaten, you haven't drank anything, you haven't gone to the bathroom, nothing. Whoosh, you are focused on point the whole day because your sympathetic nervous system was in charge, okay? Now, what happens? You get in your car, you're driving home, maybe a 20 minute drive. By the time you get home, you can hardly get out of the car. You're exhausted, you're tired, you feel like you weigh 100 pounds more than you really do and you're walking up and you got your key out, you're ready to go in your house and what? You gotta go pee. I mean you gotta go. And you're hungry all of a sudden, you're famished all of a sudden and you're tired. Parasympathetic is now in charge. It's our normal part of living. The problem is, lots of times we stay too long in this one. And that whole chemical cocktail that's going on in our body when this is in charge can be detrimental. Also, just be aware that we take meds that stimulate one or the other of these frequently. And we take them for the side effect, whether we're trying to slow down the heart, or whether we're trying to open the lungs and other things as well. The autonomic nervous system it is an important part of our body's nervous system and health.